A Friend for Henry by Jen Bailey, illustrated by Mika Song. In classroom six, second left down the hall, Henry was looking for a friend. It couldn't be Gilly, who circled her fishbowl. She's quiet, thought Henry, but she can't play on the swings. It couldn't be Miss Magoon, who knew about hugs. She shares, thought Henry, but she has to. Could it be someone else in classroom six? In art class, Vivian shared Henry's double easel. Vivian was a kaleidoscope, a tangle of colors. She had ribbons and clackety shoes. She knew every pony song. Her fingernails were painted like rainbows. When I get paint on my fingers, Henry said, I wash it off. Vivian waved her hands too close to Henry's face. My mommy painted them. Aren't they pretty? Painting on people is against the rules, said Henry. Did your mommy get in trouble? No. Henry lowered his voice. Did you get angry? Why should I? But Vivian was very angry later. He ruined them. She likes rainbows, Henry explained. And he thought a friend would say thank you. Reading time was Henry's favorite. My friend will like it too. It was Henry's turn to put out the carpet squares. He tucked the blue ones next to the brown ones, green in the very middle. All the edges met, and the corners fit perfectly. Reading time, shouted Samuel, my favorite. Samuel was a thunderstorm, booming and crashing. He was kind of scary if he didn't have your blanket. He could pick up crayons with his toes and do proper somersaults. Henry stepped in front of Samuel. Somersaults are hard. Samuel dodged past. I want a green one. Wait, Henry's throat felt tight. They're perfect. Mine's a magic carpet from a genie's lamp, said Samuel. It's not. Henry's face was hot. It's from Rug World. There's the sticker. Up, up, and away, magic carpet. Booming and crashing, Henry's fingers curled closed. A friend listens. Henry, Miss Magoon knelt in front of him. Sit with me, please. Henry did but he couldn't see the pictures, and his carpet square was brown. During snack time, Jaden took three crackers instead of two. At recess, Riley dug up worms and let them use the swings. At free time, Henry's hope for a friend felt small. He watched the sunlight play along Gilly's scales. He could watch Gilly for a long time. Katie watched too. Katie smelled like strawberry milk. She read storybooks all by herself. She slid down the big slide, sometimes backwards. The big slide is too big, said Henry. Gilly floated past. She's shimmery, said Katie. But she doesn't blink, said Henry. What does she do? She burps pebbles, Henry thought, and breathes underwater and turns sunshine into colors. Henry hunched into his sweatshirt. Fish things. Katie bent to have a closer look. I like her. Henry tried not to blink. Want to play blocks? Sure. I don't like triangles, said Henry. I don't like broccoli, said Katie. Together, they built a tower. It had rectangles, cylinders, and squares, but no triangles or broccoli. It's perfect, said Henry. Thank you, said Katie. The next day, they played on the swings, and Katie went down the big slide. Henry waited at the bottom for his friend. The End